Hello, it's Tom taking a look at Zelda Breath of the Wild on Nintendo Switch and the Wii U. This is just an initial look at the first hour to avoid spoilers, a quick sample to give you an idea of how the two compare. We'll be doing a deeper analysis of later, more strenuous areas further into the adventure. For now though, the Great Plateau area gives us enough to answer the question, do Wii U owners really need to upgrade to Switch, or can they still get a comparable experience? <laughs> Ok, let's dive into the visual comparison first. I've fully updated both Switch and Wii U versions here to patch 1.1, and to be clear the Switch is running in docked mode. That means the game renders at a native 900p on the right hand side, as opposed to the 720p you get in its handheld mode. Even with this unzoomed footage though, the first thing you'll notice is that divide in image quality. Wii U runs at the same resolution as Switch in portable mode, at 720p. Looking close, the result on Wii U is expectedly blurrier and less crisp. Of course, both will need scaling to your 1080p or 4K TV from their resolutions, and neither has particularly great anti-aliasing. But the fact Switch in docked mode increases the pixel output by 56% helps clarify the image. It improves the appearance of distant objects, moving transparencies like grass, and cuts down pixel crawl on geometric edges. So that's 720p on Wii U versus 900p on Switch. It's a clear advantage. But in almost every other respect, the visual makeup of both games is identical. Draw distances, shadow resolution, model quality, texturing, effects, and even the thick volumetric lighting seen in the first shrine are all exactly the same. In terms of core visuals, Wii U owners really aren't missing out at all. Besides resolution, each version turns in identical graphics settings, which is surprising given how much more we expected from Switch. There is one small difference worth mentioning, and that is texture filtering. On Switch, you get a very slight improvement in bilinear filtering quality, meaning textures aren't filtered so close to the camera. If you look close, you can spot lines passing across the mapping on the floor, especially complex brickwork, making it easy to see the point at which any filtering kicks in as you walk forward. But Switch does get an extra meter, if you like, of clarity in the texture work before a similar drop off in quality. Wii U is basically in line with Switch's portable mode in this sense, but to be frank you won't notice any real difference in motion. Ok, another difference promised by Nintendo is in audio quality, but it's a minor point really. According to the developer, Switch uses higher quality samples for ambient sounds. Whether that's running water, footsteps or swaying grass, the idea is Switch has the memory to spare to support a richer soundscape as you walk through its world. But overall, having spent the day comparing both with closed cup headphones on, it did prove difficult to hear any difference at all. For those using audiophile grade monitors, the Switch's highest sample quality could shine through. But for most players, myself included, the Wii U version's sound isn't falling short in any radical way. On an audio visual front, the Switch version is the one to buy. The improvements are surprisingly minor though, given the relative power of the machine. That 900p resolution boost is really the biggest upgrade you'll catch by eye. A more interesting point is the performance. Of course Breath of the Wild has been in development for well over 4 years and its physics based open world engine was built for Wii U hardware first. A conversion to Switch happened much later, a different architecture entirely to what it was intended for. This means Nintendo has on the one hand been able to push a higher resolution on Switch, but on the other frame rates aren't necessarily better than Wii U. Looking at the frame rate tests, the findings are really interesting. The basics first, Breath of the Wild targets a V-Sync 30fps on Wii U and Switch, but that huge open world design creates problems sustaining it. Because this is a double buffered form of V-Sync, when it does drop from 30fps on either side, it lowers to the next major factor down and hard locks to 20fps. Now this first walk down the hillside shows Wii U doing exactly that. A firm 20fps line where Switch more or less gets away at a smooth 30. But the flip side to this is that Switch can drop just as aggressively as Wii U, but in other areas entirely. It's a complete reversal. Check out this stretch of grass as we walk backwards and forwards, Wii U holds a rock solid 30 here, 
but despite the matching weather and time of day, it's Switch that's now the one hard locking to 20fps. There's no obvious visible cause for this divide either, the rendering load here is mild compared to the game's more built up woodlands, it suggests a bottleneck behind the scenes in the background streaming of data. Now this is just a theory, but it could be that the world is partitioned differently for each machine's RAM setup, creating lurches to 20fps in different spots for each machine. In other words, long bounce at 20fps is a reality on Wii U and Switch, but Switch consistently does it in one spot while Wii U's problems are on the hillside we showed earlier. With that in mind, it's surprising to find the Switch running in portable mode at 720p doesn't suffer from drops in either of these areas. It suggests the Switch's Tegra chip is better optimised for a native 720p rather than pushing to 900p, and it could in theory be striking smoother results at a lower resolution. There's plenty more footage to roll out though. In general, what you'll see is the Great Plateau typically running at 30fps, but Wii U and Switch can buckle out of the blue when moving too fast into a new area. We'll be back with a deeper analysis of Zelda Breath of the Wild's performance in the coming days. I hope this was a useful primer on what to expect though, and from what I've seen, Wii U owners aren't being shortchanged at all. The resolution boost on Switch is the biggest dividing point, but performance has mixed fortunes on either machine. I'd be curious to know what you think in the comments and which version you'll be going for now the game's out. As ever, like or subscribe to support what we do at Digital Foundry, and until next time, thanks for watching.